Hi, my name is Arnold Kaplan. I'm uh, a professor at Case Western Reserve University, and it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon to lecture on MSCs. And this is a title given to me by uh, Bernie Siegel, the mighty engine that propels regeneration and rejuvenation. So MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells, are misnamed, they're uh, misunderstood, and um, worse than anything, they're mismanaged. They function naturally in the body to control our whole body physiology by affecting every single organ, including the total um, systems approach in involved in aging, and I'll discuss that in detail. They also act as guardians or sentinels uh, of the invasion of bacteria and virus, which I'll also uh, discuss in detail. So in the late 1980s, I, I named cells which attach to Petri dish from the light cell fraction of human or animal bone marrow. I named them as mesenchymal stem cells because I could um, chemically induce them to separately differentiate into a variety of mesenchymal tissues in cell culture. If, if you go to Google and you look up mesenchymal stem cells, you'll see that they say that they are multipotent stem cells uh, found in bone marrow that are important for making and repairing skeletal tissues such as cartilage, bone, and fat um, from bone found in bone marrow. Uh, this turns out to be dated and completely wrong. The word mesenchyme uh, is, is a fancy English word for the mesodermal layer or embryonic connective tissue layer that forms your hematopoietic system, your connective tissue. Um, these cells, these mesenchymal stem cells, do not, as in never, differentiate into mesenchymal phenotypes. If you look on the line and you look for a picture or a chart, a diagram of mesenchymal stem cells and all the things it can do, what it says, this figure says it can differentiate into osteocytes or fat cells or chondrocytes, and it can do so and replace dead cells in these tissues. This turns out not to be correct. For example, you can never get uh, MSCs to naturally in the body differentiate into nerve cells or any uh, in any of these tissues. So this is wrong. This diagram is wrong because MSCs are not stem cells. They can't do this. A stem cell could do this. This is a, a, a cell culture artifact and we can explain that, but it's a cell culture artifact. So I'm going to talk about these stem cells and, and the logics for their derivation. And their logics, actually, this is a, a histology textbook from when I was in medical school in the 1960s. And this was called a hematocyte. This hematocyte, as deduced by hematologists from blood smears, could eventually in a sequence of differentiation steps uh, called a lineage. This lineage could produce, for example, erythrocytes or white cells or any of the cells uh, associated with your uh, blood cell circulation. So, so it, this the term was coined that this was a hemopoietic stem cell. And, and the logic actually supported the use of these cells in bone marrow transplantations to rejuvenate people who have been wiped out by chemotherapy or radiation. I'll come back to this in a few minutes. So in 1991, um, I, I coined the term mesenchymal stem cells because I took bone marrow, dispersed it, and, and from a gradient uh, put cells um, from the light cell fraction onto petri dishes, they formed colony units. These cells divided by like wildfire. And the trick to the whole technology was a medium that had been optimized for embryonic chick, limb, bud, mesenchymal progenitor cells. And, and so I could induce them with these unique and powerful inductive mediums to become bone forming, 
uh, fat forming or cartilage forming cells. So I thought I had isolated real stem cells. And so in the 1990s, uh, I presented this data as a, actually a mesenchymal stem cell involved with the natural turnover of all of the mesenchymal tissues in your body, including their regeneration. And so I felt uh, 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 justified of putting this di diagram with adult bone marrow and saying there were mesenchymal stem cells and they were also present in the, in the presence of hemopoietic stem cells. But these are not stem cells. These are committed progenitors. These cells can never become nerve, can never become muscle. They can only become blood cells, a number of blood cells, very important to our whole body physiology, but they can't become something else as if they were a real uh, bona fide stem cell. And so I drew this hypothesis diagram, MSCs could divide, and I could put them down these lineage differentiation pathways to make bone or cartilage or muscle or fat, et cetera. And, and at that time, the dogma of the day was that what you saw in vitro is what happened in vivo. So I thought I had really had stem cells. This turns out, to, this dogma turns out to be 100% wrong. And so uh, all of this, we published papers on all of this. All of this is absolutely correct and reproducible in culture, in vitro. This does not happen in the body. So MSCs are not stem cells. They cannot differentiate into mesenchymal phenotypes um, in the body. So what did I miss? And, and, and so now retrospectively, all of these tissues that I list here, there are publications in all of the tissues I picture here, uh, nervous tissue, muscle, kidney. You can isolate the MSCs into culture by the technique I use, get them to divide, and you can get them to differentiate by using these inductive medium. All of these tissues are vascularized. That's the key that I missed. It turns out you have 50 to 100,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Every single one of them has a perivascular cell associated with them. The perivascular cells give rise to MSCs. We have stains for perivascular cells. And indeed, these perivascular cells are sitting on and in the basement membrane surrounding blood vessels, whether they're large blood vessels or small. So, so this is a, a, a capillary and heart. And my good friend Bruno Pio colored these um, uh, cells red to emphasize them. They're pericytes and they give rise to MSCs. They also are the vasocontractal elements of these small blood vessels. So the blood pressure medication I took this morning affects this cell, not the endothelial cells of these blood vessels. These are all pericytes, they all look different because they have different tissue surrounding them. They're all from very different tissues. And indeed, um, arterioles and vineals have pericytes, even in the same tissue, that look different. We're very clever at getting these pericytes off, putting them into culture under permissive conditions where they'll plate out and divide, and we can uh, induce them to differentiate into all these tissues mechanical or chemical methods to get the pericyte off and media that supports the differentiation of these mesenchymal phenotypes. So MSCs are multipotent in culture, but never in vivo. Here's a published article that completely supports that. So in rodents, if you have a labeled pericyte, red, and you have an animal that's aging, or you have a animal that's making a ton of fat on a high fat diet, or, or you break a leg in the animal, the pericyte stays on the blood vessel. It never goes in into the fat, it never goes into the bone. The pericyte stays as a pericyte, and therefore no lineage plasticity in vivo. In vitro, no problem. In vivo, big problem. So here's a mistake that my 
colleagues and I made, Dr. Somoza, Korea and I, we, we, we did uh, a, a poster for nature in 2016. You can download the poster. It has lots of new information about MSCs that's uh, intriguing and interesting. But we got caught up in the nomenclature of the day and we, 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 we drew this as the universal stem cell niche because all of these tissues have the committed progenitor, committed progenitor, yellow ball, sitting on a pericyte that could become an MSC, and both of them are in contact with the blood vessel. This is the committed progenitor niche. It's the same in muscle. It's the same in neural tissue. It's the same in bone marrow. And we can define each of those in a unique uh, biochemical way. So um, MSCs are not stem cells. So I kept the MSC nomenclature because of my delicate ego. And, and I now call them medicinal signaling cells because they're drug stores. They make gigantic amounts of cytokines and growth factors at sites of injury or inflammation. And I published a paper renaming them um, uh, medicinal signaling cells. There are no stem cells in adults. I'll come back to that in a minute because all of the regeneration in individual tissues uh, are from committed progenitors. Those committed progenitor are the replacement parts for the turnover of each of your tissues. So within all tissues, there are committed progenitors which furnish and replenish the tissue with distinctive and unique tissue specific uh, differentiated cells that replace those cells which drop dead. That means liver, that means heart, that means kidney have committed progenitors and the cells they replace in that tissue come from the committed progenitor. And once you, you recognize this new and, and complete idea that you have committed progenitors in every single tissue, skin included, uh, you don't need stem cells. The stem cell, stem cell keratinocyte stem cell that you see in skin can never differentiate into nerve, can never differentiate into liver. It's not a stem cell. So again, if you have a blood vessel, it breaks, it's injured, the pericyte comes off, it differentiates, that pericyte differentiates into an MSC. MSC senses the microenvironment, becomes activated, from the front of the MSC, it makes molecules that control the immune system. So actually, this is a blanket of, of molecules whose names we know that actually inhibit your normal immune system from both seeing the cell and seeing the injured tissue behind it because sometimes uh, the, the immune system goes after the injured tissue and you get uh, uh, autoimmune reactions. So from the back of the cell, it makes other factors that set up a, a regenerative microenvironment. So if you go to clinicaltrials.gov and you put mesenchymal stem cells into the search engine, you'll get over 1,100 different um, uh, clinical trials that are listed. Here are the clinical symptoms, larger fonts so you can see them, Crohn's disease, graft versus host disease, uh, MS, ALS, kidney transplant, acute myocardial infarct, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, autism, all of these symptoms, all of these diseases have two things they need. They need immunomodulation and they need the activation of the innate regenerative capacity of that individual tissue. So again, here are all the uh, things MSCs do. They are not stem cells. They come from perivascular locations. They survey and sense the microenvironment they're in. They modulate the immune system by making pro or anti-inflammatory inflammatory molecules depending on the microenvironment. We can use allo MSCs as you'll see in a minute. These, these MSCs make antibacterial and antiviral proteins. Young women have monthly bleeds every month and never get sepsis. Why? Because what happens is that it, it, MSCs are released from those blood vessels. If a bacteria bumps into an MSC, goodbye bacteria, one of these proteins that I'll show you the names of, 
uh, kill it immediately. It makes uh, molecules that sit on opioid receptors. It makes mitogens that um, uh, affect tissue intrinsic progenitor cells. They're angiogenic, they stop scar from forming, and they influence cells um, that set up long-term therapeutic effects, particularly regulatory T cells. Remove the term stem cells from your vocabulary, I'm begging you. So MSCs are the mighty engine that actually stokes and runs regeneration and rejuvenation in your body. Here's a perfect example. Read this incredibly well done, um, uh, newly published article that looks at obesity and exercise. It takes muscle, visceral fat, and subcutaneous fat, gets the cells from those tissues, uh, does single cell RNA seq for every single cell in that platform. And what they show is that uh, all of the exercise and obese, uh, uh, um, obesity uh, signals are hugely different with regard to the e, uh, extracellular matrix and circadian rhythm as seen by the genes that are in MSCs, both the within tissues and between tissues. This crosstalk is controlled and centered around MSCs and the coordination and mediation of exercise as opposed to obesity is mediated by the transcripts and molecules made by MSCs. So again, I can change subjects now. It's the same story. Um, uh, aging, aging can be defined as a loss of blood vessels. I can take a skin biopsy from everybody in this audience. I can tell you how old you are and, and whether you have diabetes uh, by your blood vessel density. My blood vessel density is, is extremely low. Um, diabetics are half of the age match controls. So aging can be defined by loss of blood vessels and therefore loss of access to MSCs. So old guys like me need a booster shot every so often. And here's a company called Longevron who's doing phase two, phase three clinical trials for geriatric frailty. And they're using marrow-derived, culture-expanded, allogeneic MSCs, and go to their website, their, their uh, publicly traded company, go to their website and look at their phase two uh, clinical trial data, spectacular. So again, um, aging and, and, and how these blood vessels and MSCs function, and the fact that I need a booster shot, clearly documented by these trials. So uh, MSCs are site-regulated regulated multi-drug delivery vehicles. They, they uh, uh, control the regenerative milieu of each individual tissue. They function at, at sites of inflammation or injury. And basically, they manage the innate regenerative potential of each and every tissue in, in our body. So the, the vasculature is important but also the presence and activation of MSCs. So I'm gonna talk about COVID-19. This is the, the cover of science, 27 March, remember this date, 27 March, 2020. This is when um, uh, this virus with its spike protein and, and the spike and the ACEs2 receptor that uh, the spike fits perfectly into, um, became a cover of uh, Science Magazine. Now I want you to remember that MSCs can control the immune system, therefore cytokine storm. They have an effect on regeneration. They can repair holes in, in, in lung blood vessels or in tissues by causing regeneration. The bacteria that accumulate there can be killed by the proteins that are produced by MSCs and, and they affect pain management. So here's the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Here's the ACEs2 receptor. This is a blood vessel. And so this virus goes into the endothelial cell of that vessel and, and it causes a gigantic hole. That's why you get blood clots that are killing people. 
and 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 these blood clots come from these gigantic holes due to this uh, infection. And and I want you to look at this date, January twenty third, twenty twenty, at, at, at in Beijing at the Yuan Hospital in China, they did a clinical trial in which seven uh, deathly ill COVID patients were given one infusion, intravenous infusion of marrow-derived culture-expanded MSCs. The MSCs cured all of these patients or significantly improved them. And within two days after the MSC infusion, uh, the, the head doctor knew that they were working not only because of the blood work that they did, but also because the patients stopped moaning. Their pain subsided. MSCs don't have this ACEs2 receptor or, or the protease that activates it. So the MSCs are never infected or, or neutralized by virus. And so there are about 150 clinical trials. This is 2021. Um, and, and I'm listing the different sources. Remember, remember, MSCs come from vasculature in dental pulp, in, in, in uh, umbil from umbilical cord vessels, uh, in menstrual flow, from Morton jelly, and, and even uh, MSCs throw off exosomes, they're, they're in a clinical trial. And so there's a review of all of these clinical trials uh, by Wenchen Q at uh, Mayo in Florida and, and, and his collaborators, I'm one of them, um, and, and in which uh, a systematic review and meta-analysis was done and, and published the very positive results given by MSC cell therapies for COVID-19. Here's one of those publications by Joshua Ayer, University of Miami and his entire group in which they uh, gave uh, Mesenchymal's uh, MSCs from uh, culture expanded marrow um, to uh, very, very severe sick COVID-19 patients. They all, they all had, uh, were on ECMO and, um, and it, they were given three infusions uh, of MSCs and uh, two of those patients unfortunately died, but, but the other patients um, did very well. And, and um, not only that, but they assayed for um, the, the spike protein, IgG for the spike protein titer in the mouths and nasal passages of these patients. And, and within a couple of days, all the spike protein was gone. And in the results section and in the discussion, they, they couldn't imagine what contributed to the viral clearance. I'll show you what contributed to the viral clearance. Uh, this is a story uh, that my colleagues and I at Case Western Reserve have uh, developed. It turns out that these MSC produced antiviral proteins bind to the spike protein. This is Aaron Weinberg. He's a professor of uh, dentistry uh, at Case Western Reserve University and uh, University of Hospitals. He studies in the mouth these antimicrobial proteins. These are made by uh, the, your mouth to control the uh, bacterial load that's going to your GI tract. They've been sequenced and studied carefully. They're called defensins. And, and here, uh, Dr. Weinberg and his colleagues um, have produced a computer model because all of the amino acids sequence, these three proteins are antiviral. All of these proteins are antibacterial. And in computer simulations, the, the um, receptor binding domain and the, uh, the amino acid domain of uh, one of these proteins from uh, made by MSC's defensins LL37 uh, bind tenaciously. Here's a paper that's also published that uh, in which they say that uh, the, these LL37 takes the virus particles out of solution or they cloak, they exclude any binding by, by, by any of the viruses uh, on the cell surfaces on the ACEs2 receptor. So uh, MSCs produce a variety of trophic factors. Some of these are antibacterial, such as uh, in um, uteruses, um, 
for menstrual blood flow or they're antibacterial. They stop scar from formation. They have mitogens that affect tissue intrinsic progenitors. They have molecules that sit on opioid receptors. Uh, they affect wound closure and regeneration. So MSCs can be, in receptive patients, curative for COVID-19. So again, MSCs come from perivascular cells. They, they uh, sense and respond to the uh, microenvironments with uh, immunomodulation of pro and anti-inflammatory molecules. They, uh, have opioid, they have molecules that sit on opioid receptors. They produce proteins that are, are antibacterial and antiviral. They produce mitogens, which affect tissue intrinsic progenitors, and, and they have effects on, on cells in the blood cells in the circulation and can generate uh, regulatory T cells that account for long-term therapeutics. Remove the term stem cell from your vocabulary because MSCs are not stem cells. So again, um, I would predict that uh, MSCs are going to change the way medicines practice. Uh, a guy gets a heart attack in rural Ohio, a helicopter picks him up, brings him into the inner city, we treat him. Ten years from now, that guy is going to get into his car, go a mile down the road to the urgent care center, get a bag of MSCs, hook them up, uh, IV, and that's going to be uh, the appropriate treatment uh, for acute myocardial infarct. That's my uh, prediction. Uh, again, for cell-based therapy, I think uh, Dr. Mr. Churchill would say we're at the end of a very, very long, very complicated uh, uh, sequence of events. We're at the end of the beginning. We need phase three trials to get these cells approved for various uh, clinical uh, indications, and, and it will change the way medicines practice. All the work in my lab is supported by your generous tax dollars, and there, it's clear there's a number of colleagues at the Skeletal Research Center who provide the data, and, and I'm clearly only uh, the mouthpiece. So I want to thank uh, Bernie Siegel and the organizing committee for giving me the privilege and the pleasure to talk about this incredible, underestimated, misused, misworded uh, uh, therapeutic technology called MSCs. Thank you.